Maximum demand is the likely maximum electrical draw for any given property over a certain amount of time. The IET vaguely suggests 30 minutes. This is something we estimate for customers using basic rules of thumb to make sure each property has enough spare capacity to power a new heat pump or electric car charger and for the DNO to ensure efficient and safe operation of the grid in your area. I recently had to calculate a maximum demand estimate for my own personal property for a heat pump install, so I thought I'd take that opportunity to look into this a little bit deeper. Underestimate the maximum demand, and you could end up blowing your home's main cutout fuse in the depths of winter and placing your local substation under unnecessary strain. Overestimate, and you may need to unnecessarily apply for permission to connect your new heat pump or EV charger or have to upgrade your main cutout fuse, or maybe even go through an expensive upgrade to a three-phase electrical supply. So getting this as close to reality as possible is important. Essentially, there's three guidance books in the UK on maximum demand, the Electrical Installation Design Guide, the On-Site Guide, and the affectionately titled Guidance Note 1, Selection and Direction. These all essentially contain exactly the same information, which is not surprising as they're all produced by the Institute of Engineering and Technology. The opening paragraphs on maximum demand say, the information and values given in this appendix are intended only for guidance because it's impossible to specify the appropriate allowances for diversity for every type of installation and such allowances call for specialist knowledge and experience. I then went on to read the least helpful guidance I've ever come across. To save you the agony of going through the rest of it, the guides basically refer to two tables, table A1 and table A2, although they have different names in each book. Table A1 contains assumed current demands for different types of circuits to help specify the electrical supply for one specific circuit. If you're assessing a group of circuits, like a whole house demand, the guidance says you should only use Table 2. I thought I should point that out as we've seen a few sources calculating groups of circuits using the tables from A1, so don't get caught out with that one. Table A2 gives methods on how to apply what's called diversity to different circuit types. And diversity basically accounts for the fact that all the appliances won't all be on at the same time. Each row gives a different method for calculation depending on the circuit type and says to either use a circuit specific maximum possible draw, i.e. what the appliance can take from the circuit, or use the circuit's breaker size instead, which is obviously slightly higher. However, determining which rows some appliances fall into is almost impossible. For example, cooker circuits fit in row 3, where we would refer to its maximum possible draw, and also fit into row 9, where you must use a circuit breaker size, and uses a different methodology of calculation. Additionally, the worked examples didn't follow the guidance, and applied the wrong methodology to the lighting circuits and the cooker circuits. The guidance is extremely vague and complicated, and not really possible to follow as the IET themselves have proven. We could do a whole video on examples like this and suggestions of minimum allowances of 100 watts per light bulb in the guidance books, but as most people watching this video will know, they are dated, inaccurate and confusing. I followed the guidance as best I could at my own property and gave me a maximum demand of either 89 amps or 120 amps using some other poor method suggested. To me, this current of current draw looks totally unrealistic. I just couldn't believe I would ever use this much power in my little home. Especially as I don't have an electric car charger installed yet. This also meant I would have to go through the potentially long process of applying to the DNO to connect my heat pump to the grid as it's over 60 amps demand, and I'd rather not go through all that. It's worth remembering that also, these guides are all non-statutory documents which means it's not regulation to use them, they're only guidance. The guidance, in fact, actually says the use of other methods of determining maximum demand is not precluded where specified by the designer, which means you can use different methods to figure out the maximum demand if you want to. There were other suggestions by the ENA, who are an association of the Energy Networks and NAPIT, an accreditation service, that suggest to install a clamp meter with data logger, leave it in the property, then make an educated guess after one to two weeks of collecting data. 
Now, I didn't really have the time for all of that, and the data collected in June would hardly be relevant in winter. However, these suggestions were also followed by what looks like a separate suggestion of a simple way of measuring maximum demand would be to use a clamp meter capable of logging peak values. So I decided to do a little experiment to see exactly how accurate this method was. I went round my house and switched on every light and significant power drawer I could possibly think of, including my heated mirror in the bathroom, towel radiator, iron, toaster, microwave, and two ovens, everything, and simply measured how much current I was drawing using a clamp meter. And the results were surprising. Only 70 amps, and remember, that's with no diversity applied. There's a clear problem here. Perhaps the calculation method is for homes not being lived in yet or working off plans to leave room for heavy usage. There is absolutely no way all these appliances would ever be on at the same time, let alone for up to 30 minutes together. How could we achieve the calculated maximum demand as a household if we didn't even have enough appliances in the house to do so? Since doing this worst case test, we actually had a smart meter installed with half hour data if you log online. Over a two week period, we found that we actually only had 2.3 kilowatts usage, which translates to only 20 amps max demand. Now, I know during this specific half hour period that my heat pump wasn't on, because I can log in to see my system using a link in the description if you want to have a look at my system. So let's add 15 amps for the heat pump itself, which would give a worst case scenario, nowhere near the 89 originally calculated. That's only 50% of the measured actual possible demand from earlier on. Now, 50% of the measured possible actual demand could be a good rule of thumb. However, remember, each home is different. So what the heck are we supposed to do if all the guidance contradicts each other? Well, here's our recommendations for what you could do as a competent engineer in domestic homes. The first step would be to check the property smart meter. Some smart meters give historical data down to half hourly resolution. And if yours doesn't, you can also connect it to a system like Loop. Others are available, which will give access to half hourly data. From here, it's actually pretty easy to determine the maximum demand. Our data scientist, Mikey Harper, owns a property which has a car charger and a heat pump, so is a much higher than average user of electricity. And his home shows a maximum energy use of 7.5 kilowatts within half an hour period. Now, this is in kilowatt hours of energy instead of power in amps. So it needs to be converted to power. To do this, we multiply the 7.5 by two, as there's two half hours in an hour, then convert this to watts by multiplying by 1,000, then divide by the 230 volt supply, showing 65 amps maximum demand. If the property doesn't have a smart meter, first measure or add up your entire maximum possible actual draw with no diversity. Now you could go around adding these all up manually, writing them all down, or purchase a clamp meter and go around and turn on all your appliances just like I did. However, you don't have to do the entire house together. You could break this down to do one floor at a time, or with even larger houses, you can do one circuit at a time. Make especially sure you don't miss any high drawer items, such as corded hoovers, ovens, microwaves, washing machines, tumble dryers, irons, blenders can take up to 2,500 watts, spas, car charger without load limiting device, and a kettle is also a high drawer item, but bear in mind it's only on for like two minutes at a time, not 30. However, it could be argued that this could simulate something else that was brought into the home and connected to the supply. Now, there's no way a one to two week measurement of standard use could ever be as high as this scenario that we've just painted. So this is an overestimate of your maximum demand just to be on the safe side. This maximum possible draw should be compared against your cutout fuse size, although upgrading your cutout fuse is unlikely to be required because of the operating characteristics of cutout fuse wires. 100 amps through a 63 amp cutout fuse takes around one hour to blow the fuse. Of course, this should again be looked at by a competent engineer. If the maximum possible draw is 60 amps or below, including however many amps your new heat pump or EV charger will require, you won't need to apply to the DNO for connection. So although accuracy of the maximum demand calculation is important, you won't have any concerns about having your connection rejected. If your maximum possible draw is over 60 amps, 
you should talk to the homeowner about their usage and make a decision based on how likely it might be for them to come near that maximum demand. Taking into account the maximum number of people living in the house currently and in the future. You should also take off anything that may not be used once your new appliance is installed. For example, the homeowner may not turn on their electric underfloor or storage heaters once they have a heat pump installed which provides cheaper heat or their electric shower or immersion heaters may be removed completely. You can then ask them how often they blend a smoothie whilst cooking a roast dinner, whilst ironing their hair and blow drying their clothes all at the same time for at least half an hour too. Of course, each home is different and as a competent engineer, you should make engineering judgments on a case by case basis. If you still can't sensibly be convinced the max demand is below 60 amps, install a clamp meter and data logger as per the ENA suggestion and measure for one to two weeks. Or you can simply apply to connect with an assumed max demand of above 60 amps. Well, that's it. Essentially, we think we should be doing more measuring and less guesswork, but we're very keen for others' opinions too, please. What do you think? Do you have a more accurate method? Or perhaps do you know of a cheap clamp Wi-Fi meter where you can log in with your phone? Please comment below. And if you do come up with a more accurate method, we will update this with a second video and we'll accredit you for it. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.